Yeah, I wanted to give you something personal. You know, that was my first rectal thermometer. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a very special book haul because it's my birthday book haul. So it was literally my birthday yesterday and uh, we went book hunting uh, and I got loads of really good stuff. But before that, there was a couple of other situations like that and I've got loads of books. Some of them absolutely amazing books. Some of them really good finds, really good finds. And some of them uh, things I didn't know about before that um, I found online and then people bought them for me for birthday. And uh, actually, there's a few things that I just love the way they look. And I've got other copies of that book, but I just really like the editions. So there's a couple of them as well. But uh, yeah, um, if you, I'll try and rattle through these really quickly because uh, there's loads of them. But obviously, I want to do it long enough for you to appreciate the book and see if you are interested in it. But I'll crack on straight away. So first off, I bought the third part of the Mistborn trilogy because I love the first book and I want to get stuck in and I know once I've read the second one I want, I'll want to read the third one straight away so I've got all three now which is really cool brand new um, can't wait to read this one so like I've said before in a previous video um, this series or at least that first book I thought was absolutely fantastic so I can't wait to get stuck in my first Brandon Sanderson book that was so clearly I know he's a good writer so that's the third book of that series and in a similar fashion I've also bought the second book of the First Law trilogy because I had bought the first one and I'd found the third one cheap. And because I'd heard so much about it, I bought the third one, having not read the first one. Now I've read the first one, I do want to read the rest of it. So I've now got the second one of that First Law trilogy as well. Um, I found a um, collected short story book of Philip K. Dick, a second book in this particular edition. Uh, I did have another one, which was the uh, We Can Buy It For You Wholesale and Other Stories. And uh, it's really, like, got knackered. So I'm going to try and get another version. But uh, clearly um, worth reading. Um, I've heard loads about this book. And I'm really pleased that I saw this for a pound. Was it a pound? Yeah, for, I saw it for a pound in a charity shop. Uh, have you guys read this? Kate Wilhelm's. Uh, where Late the Sweet Birds Sang. So uh, I think this is a post-apocalyptic book. So uh, if you've read this, let me know. I can't wait to read this. I've heard really good things about it. So that was awesome. Um, this is a, a book where I found it quite cheap and I, I haven't read anything by the author, but I keep hearing about the author. And uh, Louis McMaster Bujold. Don't know a lot about how he writes, why he writes. Blah, blah, blah. But let's have a look. Dying is easy. Coming back to life is hard. At least that's what Miles Volkasagan thinks. And he should know, having done both once already. Thanks to the quick thinking staff and the specialists who revived him, his first death won't be his last. But his next one might be. The realisation he finds profoundly unsettling. Even after he returns to military duty, his late death seems to be having a greater effect than he's willing to admit. Unfortunately, his weakness reveals himself to the world his weakness reveals itself to the world at large at just the wrong time and just the wrong way. So I don't know what this is like, but um, clearly um, worth investigating the author. Is this a good example of this author? I don't know. I've now got Dr. Sleep. So I have got, I think I've got about 45 Stephen King books now. I am revving up to do a second Stephen King video. My first video hasn't got masses of views, but... I quite like the 10 books I chose as recommendations and I'm definitely working towards another 10 recommendations. So Doctor Sleep I've got now, I absolutely love The Shining. So I'm going to read that uh, before I see the film. So hopefully this is really good. I've heard good things about Doctor Sleep, so I'm sure it's good. Um, in a similar horrific tone, I've now got My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. So as I said in my um, short story video that I've just put up, I'm about to read um, The Only Good Indians, which is by him, which is the last part of the Horror Mayhem challenge, the folklore bit. So I'm looking forward to that. But I bought this because, again, I found this really cheap. Can't remember how much for, but it was very cheap. So this was really nice because, actually, it's brand new, pretty much. So really good condition. And, uh, again, a, a name I keep seeing everywhere. So 
who knows if I read them both in quick succession maybe I could do a video about both books but anyway Stephen Graham Jones um, this is not horror it's not sci-fi it's just a little bit odd <laughs> and that's uh, I don't know if you guys know the Malcolm Price detective series yeah because the detective in the books is called Louis Knight they're called the Louis Knight series um, and they're just they're set in Aberystwyth which is a very small town in Wales and the running joke joke in the books are that all these mysterious and strange things happen in a very small town and it's like can't believe this is happening in Aberystwyth that kind of thing and I really enjoyed the first book which is this actually I, I borrowed this and then I've I've got I found others I've got four out of five I think in the series now I think there's five in the series but yeah it was a lot of fun it was it's very light and kind of witty it's not like silly comedy it's just um, witty so if you feel like a delve into something that's not particularly difficult to read will make you smile and is slightly odd then yeah check out this Malcolm Price detective series um, I'm glad I got the first one because I, as I said I borrowed the copy I read so that's all awesome um A while back, I read The Fifth Season. Yeah, it's called The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. I really liked it, but I wasn't in a hurry to read the other two. But I did like it. And then I found, yesterday, I found the other two in the series for a pound each. So I'm going to read the other two now. Um... So N.K. Jemison's obviously been hugely applauded over the last few years. Kind of big new name in science fiction. And I did genuinely like the fifth season. So um, there, there was a strange section in the book. I say strange as in unusual se section in the book where it's in second person. And that's very unusual. And I, that was kind of a nice kind of fresh take on taking us through the story. So... Yeah, that was one of the things I remember from the first book. But I like the general premise about the main character being able to move land and and stone and all those kind of things through um, this sort of natural ability. So, yeah, a really good world-building concept and interesting characters and kind of a lot to say about the other as well, which I think is probably a theme in her work, I'm not sure. But yeah, I've got the other two as well. And um, I've now... There's, there's a lot of series about it in there. I've now got the fourth book in Becky Chambers' Wayfarer series. I can't wait to read this. I really like the first first three. I said in a previous video that I particularly like the second one. I think it was when I did the science fiction subgenres video I talked about the second book in the series. But all three books are really good. I think the third one's the weaker one, actually, out of the three I've read. But apparently this is really good. So this is the last one of the series... So I'm looking forward to reading this. Becky Chambers has got a fantastic way of writing and quite an unusual emphasis on character almost in the absence of story, which, as I say, can divide readers is quite unusual, but I think it works really well for the way she writes. So The Galaxy and the Ground Within, fourth book in the Wayfarer series. Um, another one, another female author that I've read two of her, their books before, the most famous one is Station Eleven, uh, but I read another one which is called... What was the other one I read? Hold on. Last Night in Montreal was the other one I read, uh, which was good, but she's now released this, Sea of Tranquility, and uh, because it was my birthday, had some tokens, I thought I'd buy this hardback, so I might be able to get a review out there at the same time as the rest of the world. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, this I expect this to be good. Station Eleven was amazing, so... Could be interesting. Sea of Tranquility. Have you read this one yet? Let me know. I found a couple of uh, short story collections, which um, are all kind of similar to things I used to have. I may have had these books when I was a teenager. I'm not sure. But certainly books like this. The covers kind of ring a bell. They, they, they ring a massive bell. But anyway, I've got them again, if I did have them before. So the novellas, book two, edited by Ben Bova. And then the science fiction omnibus, Penguin science fiction omnibus, 
edited by Brian Aldiss. Aldiss has, has edited tons and tons and tons of science fiction collections. I think it's a big part of his career. So this one has uh, Robert Heinlein, uh, Claude Wayne Smith, Jack Will Williamson in them. Well, they're novellas, so there's only four in the book. So they're not like immensely short stories. They're novellas, so they can only fit four in there. And this one has got... Uh, I remember when I read the author list, I thought, okay, that's impressive. So Eric Frank Russell, John Steinbeck, Clifford Simak, Aldis himself, Bertram Chandler, Walter M. Miller, Isaac Asimov, J.G. Ballard, Gordon R. Dixon, William Ten, Harry Harrison, Robert Sheckley, yay! Uh, Arthur C. Clarke, Isaac Asimov again, um, Arthur C. Clarke again, Arthur Porges, Damon Knight, Cornbluth, William Ten again, James Blish, and A.E. E. Van Voigt. So loads and loads of big names in this omnibus collection. So that's really cool. I love the cover. Um, so that's going to be interesting to read. So sticking to short stories for a second, um, there's a selection of John, uh, John Wyndham short stories that I've just found. So that was really nice find to uh, see in Kim's bookshop. And that's going to add to my John Wyndham books. Got quite a number of those now. So I'll be reading that soon. Uh, equally, Robert Block. <coughs> Robert Block is a great author. And this is a collection of Robert Block stories that I found. I think I might have mentioned this in the last short story video I made. The one before the horror one. But this, I don't think I've mentioned this in the book haul. So uh, that was a really nice find. And yesterday I found this. What an amazing cover. And this is a Damon Knight um, book. And I'm only mentioning this with the short story things because um, that's I associate Damon Knight with short stories. But this is a novel, a very short novel, but it's a novel. I'll read the back. So uh, they called him Fritz, or sometimes the Brecht biped. He came from a planet 18 light years away from Earth. And he was supple, three-toed, and had a head part human, part feline, and part avian. Fritz was timid and obedient, content to live his life in a cage until the unexpected happened. The unexpected that threw him into a world of confusion and an incredible event where man became monster and monster became man. The other foot. Clearly, this is about, um, po well, possibly it could be about the way we treat uh, other species, maybe, animals. I don't know, but it looks really cool. So the other foot, Damon Knight, with that awesome cover. Um... I also found a couple of other books by big names. So whenever I see an Alfred Bester book, I always want to get it because uh, mainly, I think the only two I've read so far have been the big ones, my, uh, The Stars of My Destination and The, Debolish, um, sorry, the Demolished Man. Uh, I love those two books. So if I find an Alfred Bester book, I want to read it. So this is another one I found called Gollum. So that's intriguing. Um... Yeah, I didn't say anything on there. And I found a Ray Bradbury book. I used to have this, but I've got it again now, The Silver Locust. So I'm trying to get all the Ray Bradbury books I can get now. So The Silver Locust is another one from my Ray Bradbury collection. And um, I seem to have gone a bit crazy finding Clifford Simak books. So Clifford D. Simak is obviously most famous for the book City, which is a great book. And something I only read, um, I don't know, about six months ago or something. So it was really nice to read it after knowing so much about it or hearing so much about it. And I seem to have been a bit lucky lately with finding loads of his books secondhand. So I've so tell me if you've read these. So there's um, Time is the Simplest Thing by Clifford Simak. According to the back, it says, uh, A splendidly stirring mixture of extrasensory perception, adventure and far out social commentary. Well, that's by the Daily Mail. I wouldn't believe anything the Daily Mail said. Um, so, Clifford Simak, time is the simplest thing. There's also Ring Around the Sun. Have you guys read that one? Uh, this is uh, this is about immortality. <coughs> this is about immortality by the sound of it. Um, is, is immortality only one second ahead of us? In 1977, gadget shops are springing up all over the world. They sell er everlasting... Razor blades, electric light bulbs that never go dim, and even stranger objects still. And where are they coming from? 
There is talk of parallel worlds, other Earths separate from our own by a split second in time. Panic spreads when a race of mutants is discovered, human in appearance, but with remarkable powers. Where are they coming from? Could the answer to both problems lie in the childhood memories of one man? Let's ring around the sun. The Night of Pudley, a really short novel, this one, uh, with an awesome cover. Look at that. So another one I hadn't heard of. Um, the Pudley was a dangerous thing, not only because it was strong and quick, but because it was intelligent. It reasoned and it planned and it schemed. It could talk, though not as a human talks, probably better than a human ever could. For it could only talk words, but it could also talk emotions. It not only talked words, but also emotions. It lured its victims to it by the thoughts it put into their minds. It held them in trance with dreams and illusions until it slit their throats. It would not hunt for hunger, nor for the sheer madness of the kill, but because of the compelling convic conviction that no poodly would be safe until Earth was wiped clean of life. Looks good. Um, this is deceptive. It's called The Werewolf Principle, but apparently it's not about werewolves. <laughs> um, so um, I'm intrigued to read that one. I might do a massive Simak binge at some point soon. Um, this one, I remember, I think I... I pointed out this one as well. Worlds Without End, I think I said about this in the last short story one before the horror one. And this is a bunch of short stories by Clifford Simak. Worlds Without End, what a great cover. And then, it'll be interesting to see if there's any crossover. I found the best of Clifford Simak. And clearly, I didn't have the other book with me, so I couldn't compare. But another great cover. So there we go. Two other big science fiction names that I found some really interesting books by. Again, old vintage paperbacks. Robert Silverberg. What a lovely cover for this book called Thorns. I, I, don't, I don't think I even read the back. I just love the cover. I don't know. Uh, this one I did read the back because there was a ton of Moorcock books on the shelves. And I just wanted to get one because they're all like part two of this series, part three of this series, all that. But this is a standalone book by Moorcock which doesn't happen very often. The Black Corridor, and it sounds awesome. I'll just read the back of this one. Um, the world is sick. The forces of chaos have energized the planet. Leaders, furors, juices, prophets, visionaries, gurus, and politicians are all at each other's throats. And chaos leers over the broken body of order. So Ryan freezes his family in suspended animation and sets off for the planet Munich 15040, five years distant. There he will re-establish order in a new world and create a happier, healthier, saner and more decent society with the ones he loves. But they are suspended and they cannot talk and he is alone in space and he has been travelling for three years and he will still be travelling two years hence and he cannot see his destination and he is alone and lost and cracking up. <laughs> Sounds well good. So, The Black Corridor. Um... I really want to I've been I've been tempted to actually bite the bullet and read some Star Trek fiction. So there's a new event that's been put up on YouTube for booktubers, which is a follow-up to last year, and it's called Book Trek 2022. So Vin from Revenant Reads has created this thing, and Steve Don, who's done a video uh, announcing his involvement, and uh, there's a couple of other people that have done it. And I was kind of watching them thinking, yeah, I haven't really read any Star Trek fiction, but I love Star Trek. I said that in one of my other videos recently that I, I've always been a lifelong fan of Star Trek, but I've kind of always avoided the paperbacks for some reason. So I thought, well, if I see some, I'll get some and we'll go from there. So I've actually got three Star Trek fiction paperbacks here that you can tell me if you've read them, if they're any good. But I thought I'd just delve in a bit. So I might wait till August to read these, get involved. But I don't know. So you've got Double Double. There's the Vulcan Academy Murders. They kind of probably do what it says on the tin. And then Ishmael, which really the title doesn't tell you what it's about, but apparently people have to go through time to find Spock. Well, it's different parts of, of uh, the past to find Spock, which, uh, which, is quite, uh, which sounds quite good. So those three books might give me an idea of what I think about Star Trek fiction. There's also a book I found by Ichiguro, which I have not read any of his books yet, but I've got a few of him, uh, but I've got a few of his books now to read. And uh, this looks really good on the back, The Buried Giant. So, um, 
I'll just read from the back. The Romans have long since departed, and Britain is steadily declining into ruin. The buried giant begins as a, as a couple, Axel and Beatrice, set off across a troubled land of mist and rain in the hope of finding a son they have not seen for years. They expect to face many hazards, some strange and otherworldly, but they cannot yet foresee how their journey will reveal to them dark and forgotten corners of their love for one another. Sounds really cool. And... You know, again, because I haven't read anything yet, I don't know what I think of the author, so we'll see. So, delving into graphic novel territory. Um, this is one of my favourite books, and I've bought this because when I read it, and when I talked about it on my 10 graphic novel recommendations, I was looking at a library copy. So now I've got my own copy. This is slightly smaller in size than the other one, and really, because of the style of drawings it probably it probably suits a better it's, it probably suits a bigger edition of the book because some of the images are very detailed but this is a fantastic book so if you don't know the arrival by sean tan definitely um, look out for it because honestly i couldn't recommend it enough i want to look into other sean tan books as well but now i've got this thanks to my birthday And also another one I've heard about, and but it looks really complex. I need proper headspace to read this, I think. But um, again, tell me if you guys have read this. Ryan Hughes's Double X. So uh, a very, uh, it's a huge book, but it's also got um, lots of um, typography and imagery that is that goes beyond just storytelling. So um, you got pages like that, which I am. I expect means a lot once you're reading it, but uh, all sorts of things are in the contents of the book that go beyond the obvious. So, yeah, um, I found it intriguing when I, I saw a review of it and I thought, well, I'll look into that and see what I think. So, have you read this? Tell me what you think. <laughs> Huge book. We've got that one now. Another book I'd heard about for years, and now I own my copy of it. So this is Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer. I've actually seen the film as well, so I'm expecting this to be great, because the film is fantastic. But this is supposed to be better than the film. The film had Elijah Wood in it. I know it's about some big trek across um, the country to um, find some sort of family memory, from what I remember. The book came out in 2002. So... Um, I don't know when the film came out, but I did see it ages ago, so I don't remember a lot about it, but I remember thinking it was absolutely amazing. So, looking forward to reading that. Um, a few more items, and I'm going to sort of do a, th a thematic finish. So, I've got another book that adds to my Charles Adams collection. So, I've talked about Charles Adams a lot on my channel. Um, he is arguably my favourite ever cartoonist, and... Um, I, I really am such a huge fan. I collect his stuff, so whatever I can get, I get them. But they're very rare and they're very expensive, so it's harder for me to find them. I do find them in Amer like from American eBay sellers, and they're like astronomical because the, like they put on like twenty, thirty pound postage on it and stuff like that. So you know, I don't buy everything I see on eBay because it just like, it bankrupt me. But when I can find them relatively cheap. I do. So this was um, an awesome find, Favourite Haunts. That goes with the rest of my Charles Adams collection. But also, just been released, is this. This is one of my chief presents for my birthday. So my son got me this. This is a biography of Charles Adams. How awesome is that? So I will absolutely lap this up. Can't wait to read it. As far as I know, it's the first time this has happened. I've got a general book, which is... Um, not in my Adams family bit actually, which is a um, has got some stuff at the beginning about Charles Adams, but then goes on to talk about how the Adams family series was made and things like that. So it's not really about him as much; it's just like a chapter at the beginning about him. But this is about him in more detail. So absolutely love that this exists. Can't wait wait to read it. Also, shout out to Michael K. Vaughan because. I've now got this because I raved about the fact that he'd mentioned this on his channel, one of his recent videos, and my wife noticed I'd said that, and she very secretly ordered it for my birthday. So now I've got a biography of Howling Wolf, 
Howling Wolf is is a pretty much uh, yeah he's my favourite blues man, definitely one of my favourite musicians and can't wait to read this book. I know he was a feisty guy and uh, didn't stand for much shit. So be interesting to see how that plans out in actual details about his life. So Howling Wolf biography there. Another book that I found, I heard about it online, thought it sounded really intriguing, and that's Adam Roberts has written a book based on the plot of the thing, or who goes there, depending on the perspective. Well, I, th I get a feeling it's more influenced by the film than the book. But the thing itself is like a, f um, a separate story, but based on the same kind of thing. Sounds really intriguing. So it's got here, uh, two men together on an Antarctic research base, a killer, a skeptic alone for months on end, separated by what they believe, joined together by Fermi's paradox. Are we indeed alone in the universe? Could it be that we are not alone, but we cannot know it? Could we deal with the horror of either answer? Crossing the boundaries of time and space, the many threads of Adam Roberts' new novel weave both a terrifying adventure and a mind-blowing philosophical conundrum. Apparently, um, some of the reviewers said um, there's a lot of discussion of philosophy in the book. So, sounds intriguing. Okay, we're getting towards the end now. I mean, it is a long video. Um, this was my very special birthday present from my daughter. And as you probably know, and clearly my daughter knows, I collect cartoonist books and I specifically collect a lot of books based on the New Yorker magazine. And I've got lots of different New Yorker collections down there. And this is one all based around women cartoonists from the New Yorker. So it's called Very Funny Ladies. And um, it's edited by... Um, a female cartoonist and I had a quick look through it earlier and it's really really good some of the cartoons in it are really funny so I'm really pleased to have it it's a great addition to my New Yorker collection so I had this for my birthday off my daughter and I'm just going to finish off with two things so one is a little um, thing about some um, tiny little cute books I found which um, I just think are awesome and then one last finish, which is a book that I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was like, what? Um, but, so these are, if this is your average book size, these are little tiny, these are little tiny uh, editions. Um, can you see, I don't know if you can see that very well actually on the video, but they're, if I, they're much smaller. Yeah, they're much smaller. So this is like a normal paperback, you know, they're much smaller. And, um, they're old, um, this is a Corgi book, yeah, they're, all, they're all Corgi books I think, yeah, and uh, this one I've showed you before in, again, that short story video I did, um, great cover again, and uh, this is, these are two Richard Matheson collections, so Third from the Sun and The Shores of Space, but really tiny versions. Um, I just think they're awesome. Um, so uh, I've seen people talk about having special editions, like special kind of posh folio society type editions of books they love. But I really want to find like these really cute versions of all these books. I've got an I Am Legend that's the similar kind of thing as well. And uh, I just think they're awesome. So if I can find one, I think there's one around of City that I found once. I didn't get it because I've already got a copy of it. But... I just love this idea of having these sort of classic science fiction books like that. And then The Illustrated Man, which is was the first Ray Bradbury book I read when I was a teenager. And I love that. Again, very small book and uh, an awesome cover. So, yeah, um, those are three of those. Those three books I've had before. I've got other copies of those, but I couldn't resist it because they look really awesome. And then just to finish off, uh, this is just weird. So... Um, I saw this in Kim's Bookshop, another shout out to that shop, uh, and it was in the historical section. I was just sort of floating past those shelves, and I wasn't, I do buy history books, but I wasn't, in, I wasn't planning to buy any history books, and this is, it wasn't even in the, this was kind of in the folklore section, because it's not strict, absolute, 100% history. It's King Arthur, uh, the acts of King Arthur and his noble knights, that's what the book's called. The Acts of King Arthur and His Noble Knights. And it's by John Steinbeck. Uh, John Steinbeck. So I did not um, know 
the John Steinbeck wrote this kind of thing. And I was like, is it the same John Steinbeck? And you look inside and it says other books by him. And it's got all those books you'd expect to see on there. Um, you know, like um, like The Moon is Down, The Grapes of Wrath, Canary Row, uh, The Pearl. You know, all these books that you know, East of Eden. These are all listed in there. This is the same John Steinbeck. And uh, he's written a book about King Arthur. Who knew? I wasn't going to mention this, or at least I'd forgotten to put it in the in the in the piles. But I've actually got a version of Canary Row as well because when I first really got heavily into John Steinbeck a couple of years ago, um, that was the second one I read. So I read of Mice and Men, and then I read that and read about five others. But this was a library copy originally, and then I now found a um, a copy that I really like of Canary Row. But yeah, that was a surprise. So did you know he wrote historical stuff about King Arthur? Turns out he did. So there we are. My birthday book haul. I think there's some amazing things on that list. Did any of that stuff make you think, I'm going to look out for that? Have you read some of that stuff? Would you say stay clear of any of that? Would you go, oh, make sure you read this one next because it's awesome? Let me know. <laughs> Of what it's like to be you